Hi, I'm Mitch, and welcome to the Restoration Road. As we continue our journey through Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, we're going to pick it up today, the Be, Do, Go of Full Surrender, on the fifth of six examples of inside-out righteousness. But I'd love for you to meet my group today, and I have with me the chief meteorologist, my friend, the weatherman, Curtis Smith. Mitch. Curtis, you. you're looking really good in that suit. Thank you, and you've mixed it up with the uh, black shirt yeah, thank and you. jeans. Thank you, thank you, thank <laughs> you, Nice Curtis. variety. Speaking of being dressed beautifully, <laughs> the one, the only, Judge Wendy Davis of Allen County Superior Court Criminal Division, so let's be careful what we say and do here today. <laughs> good call. And uh, my good friend, the professional volleyball player, indoor and outdoor, Sir William Robbins is here today. <laughs> Thank you, it's a pleasure. I even dressed a little tighter today, Will, because I knew you were coming. <laughs> <laughs> so you are Show all good. this work I've been doing. <laughs> black is swimming. Yes, black is swimming and a picture of deity, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, if you want to pick it up, I'm going to ask Curtis to read the Bible. Uh, we're going to look at first, be retaliation free. Jesus' fifth example of six examples of inside out righteousness. It flows from the heart. And what he does is he gives us the Old Testament command. He'll say, you have heard that it was said. He'll, give us, he'll allude to the legalistic interpretation. And we're going to talk about that because that's what we do today even. And then he's going to give us the spirit of the law, the intent of the law. So... Uh, Curtis, we read Matthew 5, 38 through 42, and we'll just talk about it, and we'll go through the worksheet that you can go through at home as well. I will, and this is from the NASB. Okay. You have heard that it, is, it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, let him have your coat also. Whoever fo forces you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks of you, and do not turn away from him who wants to borrow from you. Perfect. Perfect. So I want to ask you all today, have you ever been harmed by another person? <laughs> oh, Where do I start? You have. <laughs> I, I want you to give it this list. way. Have someone insulted you, taken something from you, or abused your time? Well, we're all married, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, so I'm the answer stupid. is yes. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Scott, if you're watching this, I would never say anything like our chief meteorologist did. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Jesse. Yeah. You should she have heard the I'm great kidding. things that you, you were saying about her before. Beforehand. I know. Will, you were going to say something? Have you been insulted? Um, <laughs> uh, not by my wife. I don't know what he's talking about. But <laughs> by coworkers, uh, people in the workplace, perhaps. <laughs> perhaps. So, and Judge, I'm sure you have, probably even uh. in the courtroom. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Beyond an insult in the courtroom. But I think, um, you know, we, being an elected official, too, you don't go through an election and not have things that are whirled at you that deep in your heart you know, are untrue mm -hmm. and to try to defend those or respond or react to them. Mm -hmm. um, and those are pretty public. Mm -hmm. You know, those aren't just maybe small. Between spouses, no offense, I know that can be very hurtful, <laughs> but when like the whole world is, is splattered out in front of, um, it really makes you stop and think um, a lot of this passage and to think about how you react or respond to it. Mm -hmm. Ex excellent, because exactly what we're going to talk about. Um, in our humanness, our first inclination, I think especially, I bet you would even get advised to do this in some cases in politics, um, retaliate by harming the offender in the same way he harmed us. And sometimes there's a Christian way where you do a little less, <laughs> but we want to harm the offender in the same way, and that's what retaliation means. It's to repay, uh, evil for evil. And then Jesus offers this different way. So he says the Old Testament command is eye for eye, tooth for tooth. And what he's referencing is the civil laws that had a one-for-one one equity in judicial matters. So I'm sure you're well aware of that, Judge. Mm -hmm. um, but the legalistic interpretation that the Pharisees were communicating, and it'd be similar to what we get today, repay those who harm you. So they followed the letter of the law and missed the spirit of the law. The spirit of the law is important, isn't it, oh, Judge? Very, very. Um, I remember I had, it just came to me, I had a, a matter in the state, uh, I won't say the state, and um, <laughs> they wanted to charge us as an auction company sales tax on every vehicle that left 
based on a, a special state law they had called the privilege and use tax for having an event there. So we follow, you know, the interstate commerce rules. If it's a dealer, if it's being shipped out of state on a common carrier, we didn't collect sales tax. I mean, we followed the rules that we followed at our other 50 auctions right. uh, all throughout uh, the country every year. Well, they came back and wanted us to do that. Well, I didn't know, I didn't know what to do. It had to be a God thing. Um, I ended up talking with an attorney in a firm that did some lobbying, and, they, and uh, he said, well, you know, the intent of the law is not at all how they're applying it here. I said, well, how do you know? He goes, we helped write it for them. And so they actually went back, clarified the intent of the law, and retroactively uh, eliminated the, the problem. That was amazing to me. It was one of my first lessons that the spirit of law really means something, you know, even in our country today. So, um, you know, I, I think you see this in our kids. Uh, Will, when you coach volleyball, you probably see this. When, when bumped on the court, somebody's going to bump back. Mm -hmm. uh, we see it in the marketplace. If somebody takes advantage of a, of a company or a business person, they're going to retaliate. Um, we see it on the basketball court. Somebody fouls, I'm going to foul back. Um, we see it in marriages and divorces. When that's going on, the divorce is going on. If one spouse does one thing, the other one's going to repay. But the spirit of the law is so different. He says, but I tell you, do not resist an evil person, but give to the one who asks and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. The word resist um, in the NASB 2 you read is to take strong opposition against or to retaliate. So Jesus fulfilled the law by clarifying its intent. God has never changed. And the spirit of the law is that we should give generously or be gracious in our hearts. And if we're gracious in our hearts, then we're going to be gracious with those three things we talked about, how we get dinged at first. We're going to be gracious with our time, talent, and treasure. And that is not an easy thing to do. Um, it does, Can I interject something to you? Go and, ahead. And I, I don't mean to um, interrupt, but I don't know how many are watching that have children. Um, and I know all of us have children. Um, I think it's so interesting, just this past week, my oldest daughter, who's 16, and we were sharing stories earlier about our kids, and she's a big athlete, and, you know, a couple things on a, on a soccer field, she tells me, you know, she hears all kinds of things, and she hears girls reacting a certain way, but more importantly, we had a conversation about some things going on at school, I mean, she's 16, and, and, um, and she was just sharing with me some of the things going on with her friends and other friends, and it was a great opportunity as a mom. You know, oftentimes, if we're raising our kids in the church and in the Word, we can read this to them, but I think it's our job as parents to breathe life into it. And I Amen. think it was just such a great opportunity to say, Maddie, you know, how you react to that, and we talked about this before, it's my big thing in life, how you react to that will define you, mm -hmm. you know, and... And that will make the definition. And I kind of said whether you're a classy girl or not classy girl. But more importantly, Maddie, Christ. I mean, the Holy Spirit lives in you. And so you don't have to quote scripture to her. But I think based on what you just said, you know, someone does something to you. Someone says something. It's so easy. Your, your gut, your instinct as a human being. And I boil it down to me. I said, Maddie, I, I want to all the time say things I shouldn't say or do things or even, you know, say words out of my mouth when I'm so angry. But I think how you react to it really defines who you are even through Christ. That's outstanding. I think it's how you react in a loss, Will, don't you think? Did you just recently play for a national championship <laughs> and uh, went down to the wire? Yeah. I think people are watching. When, you, when you're as bold as you are about being a believer, I think people are watching when you, when you don't win. At the end of the day, I know for myself, um, it's constantly reminding, I have to constantly remind myself of who I am in Christ and what my ministry in life is and the fact that you know I'm trying to make a difference with the youth of today, and so I have to always remind myself that kids could be watching at any time, and the way I react to somebody else, or the way I act on the court, um, or even off the court, someone is watching. Someone is looking to me as a to be a role model. So the way I respond, do I go eye for eye with somebody who maybe says something, or maybe pushes, or you know gets a little aggressive? I think we have to remember as Christians, you know, kind of the spirit of the law and, you know, the grace and the mercy that God has bestowed on all of us. Um, and we have to turn around and extend that to others. Um, Keep in mind, too, and I, for I mean, this is still our scripture that we live by. And although I appreciate the spirit of it, um, I, I just also, have, you know, of course, in what I do, it's mm -hmm. only do criminal felony. <laughs> but, system. Great. Well, but you also have to remember, I mean, an eye for an eye, I think the spirit of it, there are going to be consequences to your actions. Correct. And so, you know, 
going back to your situation, I mean, if you say things while you're coaching or do things and, you know, uh, someone else over there is going to hear it or a child is going to hear it, um, you know, you lose, a, there's consequences to that. You lose some credibility as a Christian or you lose some sort of maybe impact you could have had on them or better yet, they turn around and they mimic you. So, you know, there is consequences when you say yes. an eye for an eye, although I, I don't believe, you know, like they used to, you know, you take my eye, I take yours. Right. But I do believe, too, that there is, in the spirit of that, there is a little bit of consequences the Lord is talking about mm -hmm. as well. And I think in your world, there's, that's an excellent point, but in your world uh, makes me think of this, and I have it in the worksheet. Um, being gracious does not mean relinquishing your, your rights, does not mean you can't have conflict resolution. It's just simply not retaliating, not repaying evil for evil. Again, it's being gracious with our talent, treasure, and time. So I want to look, at, I, I think that's the order Jesus goes here. And he, he talks about being generous with your, our talent. And it may not be obvious at first, but as I study this and started looking, I go, oh my goodness. So he said, if someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. The, the, the uh, talent is the unique expression of who we are. And being struck on the right cheek 2,000 years ago implied that someone slapped you with the back of his right hand. He's talking about the dominant side of the body. And so that was a cultural expression for an insult. We use the same imagery today when we say that was a backhanded comment. So by teaching his disciples to turn the other cheek, Jesus had reiterated an Old Testament principle, ignore insults. It's Proverbs 12, 16. Uh, sometimes when I do small groups, I'll have a little quiz on, if somebody does this to you, should you go to that person? You know, it's, I start with an insult. And I, should you go to that person? Should you go get wise counsel? Should you go do this? Or should you ignore it? And I started with an insult being the problem. And I give them four options. No, but no, hardly any Christian will ever pick ignore it. But there it is in our <laughs> Bible, you know, that generally true most of the time. Um, so an insult, you got to think about what it is. It's, des it's designed as an attack on our talent on the value of life that God's placed in each one of us, and it's designed to get a reaction. So, so, you know, some players, I would think, play to do that in order to get a reaction and get inside your head. They know if they can get in your head and get you thinking about them and, you know, get a rise out of you or get, you know, you to become emotional, to become angry, then that'll knock you off your game. Not a lot of players play well aggressive or, or angry, I should say. You know, so if you can get them you know, upset about something where they now have anger towards you. Now you've taken them, you know, basically and knocked them off their game and got them so focused on you, they can't think about hitting the ball over the net or putting the ball in the hoop because they're, all they can see is red and they can only see you and they're thinking about how they can retaliate and get mm -hmm. back at you or say something to you or you just fouled them or hit them on a pick or something like that. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to hit you next time down the court. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, for us, it's spiking, hitting somebody in the face with a ball. So the oh. next time we come back, we're trying to hit them with the ball. Uh -huh. Or, you know, maybe you got aced on a serve. So when I go back to serve, I'm trying to ace you. But, you know, a lot of people, yeah, it's, as soon as you take a little bit of mental focus off the game and focus it on somebody else, you're not as sharp. And you start to make, you know, mistakes mm -hmm. and mental mistakes. Huge point. During my election, and, and it was just such wise words really straight out of this passage, um, when my opponent was saying things to me, and, and I just, you know, your first gut instinct is to, you know, like you said, you gotta get your character in check. She said, just don't react. Don't focus on him. That's not why you're running. You're not running for, you're focusing, focus on yourself. Like you said, your talent. Mm. Focus on why God is having you run. Just totally mm. dismiss that. And to your point, if we could live our life like that, you mm -hmm. know, because you opened up this segment with, um, has anybody said anything bad about you? Or did, I mean, come on, all of us have been there. And I think that is a piece of wisdom that you can, I can carry no matter what I do to say, I'm not going to listen. Or, you know, a lot of times it's just Satan. If you're doing God's work and you're living your life the way you should be or you're being a great mentor, you know, let me tell you, Satan's going to hop in as quickly as he can. And I think it, you can do the same thing with Satan or your opponents or whoever, you know, whether your opponent's on a volleyball court or in an election or who, the media, you know, whoever it could be to focus on yourself and your talent and your character and the way God wants you to proceed down the path. And, if, you know, it sounds so easy, doesn't it? It sounds so easy just to dismiss, yeah. okay, you know, like my daughter, just dismiss <laughs> it, Maddie, you know, I'm no, you know. Here's one uh, that uh, you would probably appreciate. Uh, a guy walked in my office when I was volunteering as a teaching pastor at Blackhawk, uh, where Curtis, where I met Curtis. And uh, he said, Mitch, you don't believe what happened to me, man. And I said, well, what happened? He said, I was on I-69 and it was bad. I go, what do you mean? 
He said, well, you know where uh, kind of 14, uh, the, the on-ramp is there and the off-ramp is there and it's, it's just a little too tight? I go, yeah. He goes, dude, the guy cut me off. I go, well, were you all right? Yep. Well, what, what was wrong? He said, about a mile down the road, man. I give him the universal gesture and I cut him off. <laughs> I said, well, was he okay? Anybody here? No. I said, well, what was the problem? There was a cop right there, man. <laughs> and I go, what happened? He pulled me over. And I said, well, what'd you tell him? He said, I told him what that guy did a mile ago. He goes, do you think that mattered to him? Yeah. I, said, I guess not. He goes, it didn't. Yeah. He said, all he cared about what I was doing. So in a way, Jesus is saying, hey, when, when you get insulted, you know, the retaliation thing isn't it. You know, it's not going to work. So he, he goes from the talent to the treasure. He says, and if someone wants to sue you and take your coat or your tunic, let him uh, have your cloak as well. <laughs> You might think, what has that got to do with treasure? Well, 2,000 years ago in Palestine, your cloak was the only thing that you had usually to your name. So that's everything you own. That's it. Your interior and exterior clothing were the only treasure. And the laws actually protected you from being wronged or cheated out of it. So at the same time, the courts were littered with lawsuits arising from disputes. And rather than sue each other in retaliation, Jesus said that we should be gracious or generous with our treasures. I'm not saying we don't defend ourselves. I'm not saying we don't uh, have to um, defend ourselves even with an attorney um, at times, but it shouldn't be our first option. It should be more like a last resort. So Paul even implored that in, in 1 Corinthians 6, 7, he says, wouldn't you rather be wronged or cheated than retaliate with a lawsuit? So when someone wrongs or cheats you out of a treasure, even though the threat of a lawsuit uh, is there, be retaliation free. Um, I had a customer who I did an auction with, and I, um, we were, uh, it was a tough economic times. And so it was the time that we added a buyer premium to uh, our business. All the other auction companies had added the buyer premium. That means if you bought a car for 10000 you would pay, say, 10500 another 5%. In essence, you share the cost of the event. And uh, we were one of the last ones to do that. Well, you know, we needed that to survive at that point in time. And a guy was, uh, so we told all of our uh, people that we did auctions with, our local representatives, um, you will share in all the other revenue, but not that. Um, and, you know, I was very clear in communicating that. I knew what the expectations would be. I knew I had, had, to, had to deal with that. Well, one of my guys must not have ever paid attention. <laughs> and when we settled with him, he, he blew a gasket. I mean, he just went, went off. He was angry. And um, he was done. Well, I, this very passage I read during that time, and I thought, what do I do? Um, because I wasn't going to change for him and have my other 49 guys, you know, be cheated, so to speak. So I started, one thing that helps me sometimes when uh, there's conflict is I and it involves either money or something else, I try to quantify the qualitative. I try to say, okay, are my emo what are my emotions based on? And when I got right down to it, it wasn't a whole lot of money. So I decided, uh, based on the Holy Spirit prompting, that I would go down, we were done anyway, and I would meet with him face to face, and I would tell him the, the spirit of what everything we were doing. I would apologize, ask for forgiveness. I evidently didn't communicate clearly enough, although on a graded scale, I would have gotten an A because this was the only one out of like 50. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was going to hand him that money and just see what he would do. I did. He thanked me. Uh, he took the money, and he said, but it's too late. <laughs> But I, the, the whole thing is, I didn't do that to, to gain anything. Um, I didn't do that to like be a hero. I just felt like the Holy Spirit was prompting me, you know, don't retaliate, don't make it another big deal, just as far as it depends on you, if at all possible, live at peace with all men. So have you ever had anything like that? Yeah, I find myself in a position where, uh, and Wendy, you probably are in the same boat, I, we're in professions that have like standard stereotypical jokes associated with them, mm -hmm. you know? 
People hate lawyers. People hate weathermen. They love, you know. But you're technically, wrong so I'm not a lawyer anymore. Okay, not a lawyer. I, I am, but I am now a but judge. But you came Those up. Those who sit hate you now. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. I do. People have jokes. Oh, I can't tell you how many times I've heard, oh, you're the only guy who can be wrong 80% of the time, and people change the percentage based on how angry they really are. Uh, <laughs> 50 to 90, typically. You're the only guy who can be wrong 90% of the time and keep his job. So I get a lot of that, and I get a lot of anger. What's changed, too, about uh, the way I, I'm attacked is it used to be that you had to come up and do it face-to-face -face or make a phone call. Now, with email, with Facebook, with Twitter, oh, they, can, yeah. they can do it and mm -hmm. remain anonymous. And I would mm -hmm. think because you're on television, I had a good friend of mine that she was a newscaster like you, and she said people can be so hateful, like, change your hair, or you look yeah. tired today. I mean, just because, you know, we, we see you every day, Curtis. Right. Yeah. I watch you, you know. <laughs> right. so that, and then people, instead of sitting there and listening, you know, they're busy tweeting or, or saying things that can be so derogatory or just hateful. Yeah, you know? and the way the world is now, you can do that in 10 seconds without having to look someone in the face. And then you can't take it hit back. Hit send, yeah. you can't take it back, but you don't even really have the, to go through the remorse of having said it because it's so anonymous. And yeah, it, there's a good side and a, a, a downside to that because be, we're in people's homes. People, I have a lot of people who have really nice thoughts about me even though I've never met them. They feel like I'm a friend to them. Um, but the downside to that is that a lot of people can work up anger for me pretty easily. Different than Curtis, I don't have a lot of people that think I'm their friend <laughs> um, that are in my courtroom. But I, I will tell you, sometimes one of the things that I ways that I kind of feel taken advantage of sometimes is since I've moved into this position is a lot of individuals um, will say, oh, but Judge Davis is working with me and Judge Davis is not, like they'll use my name mm. or they'll say that I've authorized and or I've put my blessing on something that they're doing. Um, and so I'll get phone calls or even the media calling me saying, I hear you're backing this organization, all right? And, you know, so sometimes I feel a little bit, because then I have to call them up and say, you know, you can't use my name mm -hmm. or you can't, and, and that kind of thing. And, and a lot of it's based on the judicial canons, you know, of, of what I can and can't do. But anyway. Interesting. Yeah. Well, Jesus covers uh, talent, treasure, and then time. Because he said if someone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Uh, you can just imagine what your schedules are like today. You're all running from thing to thing. I got a recovering workaholic over there. I'm not sure about the recovering. Um, and 2,000 years ago, it was the same thing. But a Roman centurion could interrupt any person at any time and say, I need you for official business. You're going to take this a mile. And the law required the person to carry the government goods a mile at his request. So Jesus said, when you're interrupted, don't retaliate. Go to. <laughs> And in essence, he said that we should be generous with our time. And so when we're hurried and somebody asks us for a little time, uh, maybe we need to be gracious, we need to be wise, but we need to be gracious. <laughs> and instead of seeing that as an, er an interruption, see it as a divine appointment. That kind of brought my temperature down when people would interrupt me uh, when I was in the thick of it in business. Um, and actually, this concept actually saved my dad's life. He was stranded in the blizzard of 78 uh, the, in a rental car with a couple and another man driving from Indianapolis, uh, the airport. They got the last rental car to Fort Wayne. No families knew that they were doing that. The one was on a business trip coming home quicker. Uh, a couple was coming home a day early from a vacation. It was just un a unique, like a perfect storm. Well, they get stopped, the fan belt breaks, and basically after 18 hours, they're freezing to death. And- um, God, I remember that blizzard. Mm -hmm. I remember the, the drifts being higher than my house, than, than, than our house. Um, well, there was a young state trooper and an older state trooper, and they were on snowmobiles. And uh, they got to a certain point and the younger one said to the older one, there's nobody else on this interstate anymore. Uh, nobody would have made it that far. And the older one looks at the younger one and said, you know, the Bible says, go an extra mile. Let's go one more. And they went one more, and they saw that they had tied this lady's slacks, real wild colors, to an antenna back when they had antennas then all the time. And uh, they were kind of flapping just above the snow. And they started to dig down 
and, and uh, saw that it was a vehicle and then started pounding on it. Well, my dad said by that time, you've heard so many noises that you thought you were being rescued. They didn't even think that's what it was, but uh, they were rescued and uh, got okay. hydrated. How do you know, now see, this is what I do for a living because I have to always judge people's credibility. <laughs> How do you know what the older gentleman said to the, uh, I mean, did they tell they that told, story? They told okay. the story, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, were you there? You, you talked like you were there. And the other one looks at the Listen younger one. I'm getting cross Wow. Again. She, and she was wondering why I'm being so quiet, Mitch. We can't even tell an innocent story around right. here without it being questioned. The, the, the accusatory I, look, my it's goodness. It's such a great story. Mitch. I'm like, this, this, there's something, there's just such a good story. I thought, no. I bet she doesn't believe your weather report. I know, <laughs> seriously. I'm She's probably one of the people. I'm with the car under the snow with the, with the I don't know. I guess I'd have to see a video of it. <laughs> she wants proof. She We're going to be some evidence. <laughs> She's been conditioned. <laughs> you are guilty of false storytelling. Yeah. Well, in guys, her mind. The whole reason um, that guilty God... Guilty until proven innocent. Right. Oh, yeah. There you go. The whole reason that God wants this from us is because he is gracious. He is generous. Um, he got Moses on the side of the mountain, and he said, I'm going to tell you who I am. And in Exodus 34, 6... God starts listing characteristics of who he is, and one of the first ones he shares is gracious, kanan in Hebrew. It means to bend or to stoop to one who is inferior. Uh, Jesus in Matthew 20, 15 says he's generous. God is generous. And Jesus obviously was gracious. In 1 Peter 2, 23, it said when people uh, hurled insults at him, he did not retaliate. Um, he, he, instead, he handed it over that's what entrust means, and it says in that passage, to entrust, he handed it over to the one who judges justly. So that's what we can do. We can have the Spirit of Christ in us actually surrender any ding in our time, talent, or treasure, and the generous or gracious one in us can reveal that. So I'm asking you today, if you get dinged in your time, your talent, your treasure, that you would surrender to the gracious one in you, to Christ in you, to his Holy Spirit. And he would use you in those moments of conflict to actually bring his restoration to others. 179, and now 180. I got 179, I give 180,000. Reserves off, fire for her, fire for her. At 181, I give 182. And now 183, 183 yet. 183, now 184. Who wants to defend 187,000? Who wants to get to the One hundred and ninety-four thousand dollars, and now two hundred. Let's go to three hundred thousand. Who wants to get to the bid again? It's only money that'll bring you happiness today.